Those Japanese concentration camps were placed inside of existing concentration camps. And I lived and worked at the site of the largest concentration camp, Poston. The conditions were absolutely horrible. The people were not even treated as human beings. They were rounded up here in the Bay Area and taken to a horse track and put into stalls without them even being cleaned. They were then transported out to the desert. And the Mojave Desert is ruthless. In the summer, it's 130. In the winter, it's 30. And they put these people in tar paper shacks, built with two by twos, tar paper, and then little sticks of wood on the outside to keep the paper in place. Well, Mojave Wind laughed at that. So, the government still lies to us and they don't want it called concentration camps, but I'm going to read two items to you and you make your own determination. First is the plaque. The U.S. government burned the buildings out there to destroy it because it's embarrassing. But a Japanese businessman built an obelisk. And on the side of that, there's a plaque. And as I researched for today's speech, I realized that it's not on the internet. But I've stood there twice, read it, and memorized it, sort of. It says something to this effect. This was a camp surrounded by barbed wire with gun towers and searchlights. It was patrolled by the U.S. Army with machine guns and military equipment. Now, the other quote is a poem written by one of the prisoners, one of our citizens. The poem is titled, The Damn Fence. And I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm, there are portions I'll share with you. Posts deep in ground, wires all the way round, machine gun nests, sentries and soldiers everywhere were trapped like rats. Imprisoned though we committed no crime to be locked up in a concentration camp. To keep us pinned behind that damn fence is someone's notion of national defense. These were our neighbors and our friends. And most people stayed silent while they were carted away, afraid to even write to them. Today we have over 800 military bases around the world and we support 73% of the dictators. 73% take our arms and we support them. There are over 65 million people forcibly displaced. U.S. military interventions and U.S. produced weapons have played a leading role in displacing those millions of people. Our war on ta terror has created many of those. For instance, just in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan, we have displaced 10 million people. The U.S. war machine must be held accountable for its role in creating the global refugee crisis. And today, no one wants to talk about the proxy war that Ronald Reagan and Oliver North started and ran, El Salvador and Guatemala. We are responsible for those conditions that the people are now fleeing for and begging at our border. We need to remember that these people are being demonized because they're labeled immigrants and they look different than some of us. We spend 750 billion a year bombing and terrorizing people whose appearance is different than ours. 
And we're told that that is necessary for national defense. This huge waste of money and resources would be better spent here. Spending it at home creates up to 19 times the number of jobs per dollar spent and fixes our problems, not creating more of them. Stop being quiet when we're told concentration camps are necessary for national defense. So, the women of Code Pink have done all the work for you. This part gets easy. The website, even Joe Biden could say, is codepink.org. <laughs> so, if you go to that website, um, as I said, the forms are already there, the outlines of what I'm about to s s share with you are there. The first step, remember there's four steps now, two steps continuing is banking. Now this is something we can all do. We can make a commitment to use credit unions. Take the money away from the big banks that use their profit to oppose us and do things that we hate. And so the one website that you might have to remember is Weapons Free Funds. Dot org. All run together, weapons free funds. You can go there and it will give you a list of investment funds for your retirement accounts and your investments so that we're not supporting the Boeing and the horrible GE and Westinghouse, all these companies that are making and contributing to the bombs and for years were the owners of NBC and CBS. Now you wonder why we don't know the true story? The second step is how you spend your money. So there is the four pillars that are used against us. Their profits are used against us. Big oil, industrial farms, big pharma, and the medical industry. We're asking that you divest. Two of those are going to be easy. You have a choice where you buy your gasoline and how much gasoline you use. They may control the refineries, but if we buy from independents like Costco or whatever your choice is, then at least part of the profit is not going back to big oil to be used against us. Industrial farms, that's easy for us to address on our daily basis. We just need to change our diet to be more plant-based diet. Now, the last two are harder. I mean, our choices are to ask for generic uh, pharmaceuticals, or mail order, but it leads us to the third step. The third step is to write and call your con congressional representatives. Code Pink has a pledge that asks the rep politicians to not take money from the weapons companies. There's only three Three politicians in California have signed that. So go to codepink.org, get the form, and raise some hell with your representative. And as we've already heard, I want to reiterate, we need to change the blue wall of silence. Our entrenched Democrats that are sitting there doing nothing. Zoe Lofgren is my representative. She's been in office since the start of time. She sits on the immigration uh, subcommittee. And I've asked her, point blank, how many trans women have to die, how many children have to die before you raise your finger and ask for an investigation? or you hold a hearing. She's the chairwoman. Nobody blocks her from doing that. We have three women from my community that walked 2,500 miles through Mexico. I don't know how they did it. That's scary as a trans woman to have to walk through that country. They survived. They get here to our border and our law enforcement murdered them. 
that is unconscionable and the children that are dying is unconscionable. It needs to change. We need to find our West Coast version of AOC. Are you out there? We need people that will fight for us, not be silent. The final step is to lobby your cities, counties, and college districts to divest also. The forms are all at code pink. So the two steps to continue this are to talk with your neighbors, friends, and family to find peaceful friends and share what you've learned here today and what you read at codepink.org. And then the second step is to vote and vote for politicians to stand up to the government lies. Don't vote for the do-nothing Democrats. We need a California AOC. If you wish to join Code Pink, just go to divest at codepink.org and Maya will be in touch with you. In closing, I want to take this opportunity at the microphone to speak about my own community. As I said, we're still 100% unemployed. It's still illegal for us to walk down the street. We're still subject to police harassment. The California legislature employs zero trans women in Sacramento. The city of San Jose employs zero trans women. The county of Santa Clara has 23,000 employees and they have one token trans woman, not the 400 for proportional. So don't forget us. We are people. Don't judge us because of our appearance. Let's stop that moniker. So peace. Until we meet again, I would like to read two quotes. I had to go back to the car and get these. I cut my speech down to meet the time limit. But after listening to the other speakers, I wanted to share, if I can find them real quick, two quotes. The first one was General Omar Bradley on nuclear weapons. Ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. We know more about war than we know about peace, more about killing than we know about living. We have grasped the mystery of the atom and rejected the Sermon on the Mount. General Omar Bradley. The final one is a General Lee Butler. He was in charge of all of our nuclear weapons. He's retired now. His quote it is a measure of arrogance to assert that nuclear weapons free world is impossible when 95% of the nations of the world are already nuclear free. I think that a vast majority of people on the face of the earth will endorse the proposition that nuclear weapons have no place among us. There is no security in nuclear weapons. It is a fool's game. General Lee Butler, and he ran all the bombers and all these bombs that uh, Ellsberg just told us about. Thank you so much.